previously on Solve the World. He opened a door. He can do that, you know. Where this door goes, no man knows. He called all his magical creatures to leave this earth and live with him on the other side of the door. He spoke to Leviathan and Ziz to tell all the magical creatures. For the land creatures, since Behemoth no longer roamed, he sent an angel. One by one, all the magical creatures made their way to the sacred door to live with God and escape this earth. Solve the World, a fictional adventure told in 100 episodes. You, you think I'm on Twitter? Good heavens. No. Episode 60 of Doors and Secrets. All conversations fit into one of three categories. Seduction, compromise, or fight. The turning point in every relationship occurs when both parties realize what category they are in. I'll give you a for instance. Peter wants to go to the store to get groceries. Peter asks Paul, What would you like me to get? Sounds simple. It never is. Peter's thinking, while he asks his innocuous question, Is there something I forgot to put on the list? Will Paul notice? He'll blame me for being forgetful, even though he's just a lazy bum that bosses me around. There's also this track in Peter's brain. He's going to tell me to get zucchini, but I prefer cucumbers. We don't have the budget for both. They look the same at the store, so I could just pretend to get zucchini, actually pick up cucumbers, and then feign ignorance when I come home. He may also ask for something silly, dum-dums or Charleston shoes. He'll, of course, add, if we have the budget for it, but it's not like that. Yeah, yeah, we may have the budget this month, but wouldn't it be better to save, because nobody makes budget in February. These thoughts and more swirl vapidly in big burly Peter's mind when Paul finally answers, Don't forget butter. I never forget butter. We have a lot, but it won't get us through February. That's why it's on my list. Are we under budget? A little? Then pick me up a Charleston chew. You don't need the calories, Peter chides. They're not for me. Charleston's are the best candy to split with the children. It's great for bringing in new blood to the Fellowship, and it's unique. If we have the budget, we should get a Charleston or two. Okay. End scene. Expecting something more? Most stories in real life play out like that. Peter comes into conflict thinking he's going to fight, but his spirit is hushed by collaborative negotiation. Compromise. Of course, Peter got the Charlestons. New blood meant more income for February. Sure, it was a risk, but Paul's logic was sound. When Peter gets home, Paul will sort through the bags of groceries, ask whether or not he got zucchini. Peter will lie, say yes. Paul is, in the moment, soothed, a.k.a. seduced. Later, he'll be ready to fight Peter when he finds out that there are no zucchini, only cucumber. 
but his fighting temper will be mitigated by Peter's lie. He, of course, thought to buy zucchini. He just mistook cucumber for its squashy cousin. And so the world turns. When Miles Fa came to my adobe, I knew he'd come to me with fire in his heart. He'd want to fight. <laughs> Friends, Miles Fa has reason to be angry. For so long, he's wanted just a few simple things. I've promised them to him. In his mind, I have not delivered. What the simpleton doesn't understand is that I have want for even less than he does. I want one thing. Just one. He wants a few. The usual, really. He wants power. And he wants prominence. I'll give him this. Prominence bit gives him a leg up in society. People the world over want power. Every infant to every denture-sporting octogenarian wants as much power as possible. Problem is, they, they think the symptoms of power are the gateway to it. They've got their formulas all loosey-goosey reversed. The babbling grandfather somehow still has a mind to believe that money will get him the power he craves. He dwells on this so long that he thinks he craves money itself. It's the one answer that would bring an end to his mortal toil. Money. If he was, say, 60 years younger, he very well might conclude that it is women that equals power. Go back another 19 and three-fourths years, and you see the desire for the symptom manifest itself in the infant's wailing to be held. He somehow believes in his moldable little brain that if he can just get mommy's attention, if she can hold him all the days of his life, then he'll have the power he so slavishly needs. Stupid, stupid, stupid. You, you all are very stupid. But I, your magnanimous piper, shall offer you the keys to the kingdom. It's simple. Here, drink from my tit the wine of pure knowledge. Drink, you ignorant babies. Power is control. Power is control. The only way to harness control is to understand the game that's being played. Money, for instance, gets you nowhere unless you know how to leverage it. Women get you less than nowhere, they get you slogging your RV in reverse, actually. Unless you know how to use them. Power is control. Power is control. I have no power. I know, you're stunned. I have none. Sad day. It's true, though. I seek power because I need control. Once I have control, I can play the game in a manner that ends with me, the victor. That's all existence is. Don't kid yourself otherwise. Life is a game. All of it. Squash a bug, you just ended the bug's game. Drive an arrow through an Indian's heart, game over, nature worshipper. That's all. But to see the game for what it is, to know who the real players are, the folks who know what game is actually being played, that, that is the challenge. And that is your ticket to power, which is, as I've already spoon-fed you, control. I, I speak gobbledygook to you. No matter. <sighs> oh, look. Here's the one, the only, the weirdly operated upon deep-throated Miles the Jackal Fa. <laughs> clap, monkeys, clap. <laughs> I 
God, how hard it is to breathe here. Miles says to me, I like my chambers to be as airless as possible. That's me. That's what I say to him. How's your girlfriend? Jen? No, numbskull, I say. I've always called him names. Keeps him in line. The other one. I don't know. I haven't seen her since before the Orion. I know. She knows you're alive. She's looking for you. I say this to distract him. Usually I need him to be distracted. It helps keep him predictable. Doesn't matter. Of course it matters. Shall I do something about her for you? I know what his answer will be. I'm moving the scene from a fight to a compromise. Little by little we go. You're lucky, by the way, to be here. It's a backstage pass. I should make you pay for such a luxury, but I'm a generous spirit today. Father, don't throw mud at me! I make him say that. Father. I've always made him say that. You have responsibilities, Mr. Fa. Your old pa just reminds you of that. Sometimes I talk in third person, for funsies. Everything's happening quick now. There's no time for side projects. If the side projects weren't valuable, didn't feed our core purposes, then I would never waste your time with them, I snicker. Maybe so, but our time is limited. I am limited. I need to be moving in one direction now. Say what you want, son. Don't leave it there. You know the Croatoan. You either know where it is, or you just know it. You know the secrets. Share them. Please. Have I not served you faithfully all these years? I take a big breath. <sighs> I sigh. Sure, I'm putting on a show. Acting like all these words impact me. Maybe more than they actually do. But I share another secret with you, you creepazoid sneaking a peek behind the curtain at me. I'll reward you for your audacious buffoonery. Here's the truth. If you act for long enough, act at anything, you lose your way. The acting becomes your reality. You can't feel anything real anymore. All your life becomes a play in which you conform to the lines you think you should say. Acting is venom to the soul. I've overacted for far too long. So my emotions, my responses, are never genuine. Genuineness is impossible now, for me. Sad, right? Not really. I don't care. That is, if you believe me, I could just be lying to you, acting about acting. You choose what to believe. Give me what I want and I'll go away. An old line. An ancient line spoken by beings much stronger and wiser than this young idiot standing before me. Still, the words require an action. A reaction. I say this, and I say this well. I, I don't know where the Croatoan is, and I don't know its contents. You know this. Why do you pester me so? The door. Nine hundred years ago. You opened it. Yes, I did. How could you do that without knowing the Croatoan? Or at least, you know the keys. You can open them again for me. I'm not altogether pleased that you've come to see me, son. But I'll tell you this, I do have what I believe you'll see as good news. Don't distract me, father. You open that door once, you open it again for me. As part of our deal. That's not exactly stipulated in the terms of our agreement. That's me, that's what I say. I say that a lot to Mr. Fa. It's something of a recurring theme. He seems hurt when he says, Why won't you do this for me? I don't know how to, I confess. Do you believe me? Can I tell the difference between cucumbers and zucchini? You judge me. Judge me all you like. At the end of all things, I will be your judge. But go go ahead. Hurl your convictions and judgments at me now. Call me black as death. We'll see how you feel at the final breath.
You do know how! He screams at me. It's really turned into quite a show now. I'm sending you to Anmo. Listen to me! He screams again, as if screaming gets him closer to the truth. It doesn't. I'm sending you there because Marshal Winston is there now. He's working for the other side. You see what I'm doing here? I bring up Marshal Winston. That name is associated with Jenny. Without saying her name, I've hit at Mr. Fa's heart. I found the source code, laid it bare. Marshal's there? You didn't think the other side would just let us cakewalk to the end, did you? How do you know this? The new constable and I are in nearly constant contact with each other. He's turned into a bit of a loose cannon these days, Mr. Fa. That's the other reason to send you. I'm no longer assured of his loyalty. The boy's face broke. The next thing he says is absolutely true. I don't need a Ouija board to examine its veracity. Veracity. See, I use big words. Here's a bigger one. Archosaurian Craniot. Hmm. I guess that's two words. You win this one. Bah. Miles Fa responds this way. He won't betray the cause. Whatever he sets out to do, he'll do it till the end. Even if it kills him. The man is beyond stubborn. Be it what it may, he's made some odd choices of late. I'd like for you to keep an eye on him. Maybe be an advisor of sorts. What about Dash? What about her? I sneer. I need always to act like the girl is unimportant. If Miles knew how valuable I find her to be, without merit, mind you, I have no good reason for taking such an interest. He'd never, ever, ever let her out of his sight. So far, he's done a pretty good job of letting her run off her leash. That's good. I don't need Miles Fa hovering around her. The whole I love you fiasco was more than I could bear. Puke-inducing, uh, fart-summoning, but... You gotta let boys be boys, let the dummy have his dream, his proverbial day in the sun with Jenny, as long as I get to her before the sun sets. She'll try to come to Anmo. She won't find it. You underestimate her. Again. My son. My son. You use these words without just cause. She's smarter than you give her credit for. And so are you. I say this truthfully. I don't value genius, let alone above-average intelligence. I've watched too many profound minds waste their time. I won't put stock in it again. I told you once all the work I put into Newton. What do I have to show for it? The laws of thermodynamics? My mentee jabs. Exactly. This is how I wanted Mr. Fa to think. I've got him in my grips now. He puts out his science, and the enemy propels himself ten generations forward with it. Science has proven to be his crowning jewel. That was my plan. Science, investigation, this was to be my royal diadem. My temple on a hill. But examine the facts, son. Examine them and tear your eyes out. He is winning with the fruits of my laboring on Sir Isaac Newton. What has it been? Four hundred years. Damnation, all of it. Without it, you wouldn't have the wars. And now, the numbered man. He's trying to seduce me now, calm me down. Fa wants to control me, regulate my moods. He forgets that I'm all an act. I can be whatever I want to be, whenever I want to be. He has no dominion over me, the little ant. I respond like this. The numbered man is my twist on his work. That's not the way I like it. I create. He twists. That's the natural order. But the numbered man, vain insect that he is, I had to contort myself to make him come into being. This is not optimal, my son. And yet, this is your finest work to date. Leviathan is starting to stir. The campaign will end in my generation, and it is so because of the numbered man. Because of science because of Newton. He does well, this Miles Fa. Good. Good, Mr. Fa. Good, son. Good. What about Dash? 
he asks again. You want her there? Want to keep her safe. I can't right now. I need her. I need the book. Or at least the keys to the door. I don't have the keys. Yes, you do! He booms. He's angry now. Yippee! <laughs> I've forgotten its secret. This is a risky statement to make. There's a good chance he doesn't take the bait. He either refuses to believe, or he will throw a tantrum with the expectation that he can somehow summon the old knowledge. We can't. But the conversational rabbit hole could last us half a lifetime. Silence. Good. He has no answer. I want her there. It shouldn't be a problem. If she wants to be there, she'll get there. How? She'll find it. How? It's an undisclosed location. Thousands of people know where it is. Someone with the means that Jenny has will find it. I need more than that. Tell me how she'll find it. Tricky question. I want Jenny to be all matched up with that further kid. When she's ogling that boy, Miles plays a distant second in her heart. That's good. That's where I want Miles to be. Not too close. Maybe not too far. I could organize it so that Jenny gets to Onmo tonight, if I willed it. Jenny would be there before Mr. Fa and I finish our conversation. But I want her with Atticus first. So, how to answer this question? I say, she's headed to Free Church down in New Zealand. I've got a girl there, Meg. Her sister works at Anmo. And it just so happens Meg put a tracking device on said sister. I'll see to it that Meg and Jenny meet up. Bada bing, bada boom. Don't... Don't call her Jenny. She doesn't like that. Why is she going to New Zealand? She's been kidnapped. The people there want her as a mascot, a speaker for the movement. Yes, I'm lying. You know this, I know this, but our friend, our son, Miles Fa, does not. Well, what's your plan for taking them out? I don't need to do much of anything. The plague is in Australia. It'll get to New Zealand soon enough. And the way they pack them in at that church down there... <sighs> they'll implode faster than Wiley e. Coyote's plans to catch the Roadrunner. So, I go to Onmo, work with a new foreman... He goes by the name Constable, I chime in. Work with the new Constable. Dash comes. Then, how will we go through the door? Faith. Faith? Faith, I say. I cannot give an inch. Give an inch, miles takes a mile. Next week on Hallmark Channel, the incredible new melodrama that's sweeping the nation. Miles with Miles. Next Sunday, 8 p.m. I don't do faith anymore. Not after you set me on a boat without telling me that you had another plant on board. Without telling me that you gave us differing plans of attack. Father, it could have been so simple, so calculated. If only you would let us work as a team. So no, I don't have faith. Not in you. We have no choice. Miles won't give in on that idea. Faith. He will have nothing of it. Let me tell you something now. Not him. Not the one I call my son. Not the tissue for brains. Weakling, that is, your Miles Fa. Not him. But you. I'm talking to you. The person who doesn't know himself. Or is it herself? You. The least of all people. You, the ever-listener. You, my concubine of the moment. I'll tell you a secret in the dark. Don't go blabbing to Miles about it. That might hurt me hurt my cause. 
It'll certainly hurt him. I need him to keep thinking I'm holding back. I need him to feel like he is my subordinate. He has to believe that with a flick of my fingers I can summon all the things he wants. You can hear it in his voice. He thinks I have control over Jenny and the whole of the Croatoan memorized. I have neither. I didn't write the Croatoan. I hate that it's been written. I don't particularly want it either. If my hand slipped upon it, I'd likely burn it to ashes. But that's not my secret. Shh. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. The secret's here. Let my fiddle and fife lull you towards the desperate truth. I've never opened a door. Not 900 years ago. Not ever. I don't know how. The video, that awful trick of the light, Lilith Babbitt's ascension, that scares me. I'm so close now. Almost have it all. My grand symphony is nearing its climax, and, and yet, there are truths that I can't stomach. Truths that I don't want to know about. It was the same 900 years ago. I didn't understand it then. Black magic, voodoo, terrifying. There were nights when I thought the game was over. I was sure I'd been checkmated, and... You too, by the by. I lose, you lose. That's how this works. choose to hate me. Fine. Many do. Most people, perhaps. But I'm playing the game for you. Even as I slay you, I do have faith. That's not a lie. As long as I've been around, I've had faith. You have to. If you don't have faith, then you believe that chaos has more power than anything else in the universe. I, I will not vote for chaos. I've seen her colors, viewed her form. She is an ugly seductress. I have faith because I know what the alternative is. You know what you should do this week? No, scratch that. Not even this week. You know what you should do right now? Is to go to DanteStack.com. That's D-A-N-T-E-S-T-A-C-K dot com. Why should you go there? Well, for one, all the music and sound effects used in this episode are on our show notes page. So you can look that up, download even, any of the songs or the music you like in this episode. Also, we just created a fan zone blog page on the website. So I'm trying my best to... Link to all the fan art, all the blogs, all the theories out there that you guys are producing. Thank you for producing that, being interactive in the Solve the World universe. And if you're a casual listener or someone who's just coming into the fold, go check that out. There's a lot of cool stuff that other listeners have created. By the way, we've sold out of the Solve the World card game. Now, if you're sad about that, that's understandable, but we can change that. On our store page, DanteStack.com slash store, we have a wait list. If enough people sign up on the wait list, pretty much just saying, yeah, Dante, I'm interested in buying the card game. If enough people sign that up, well, then I'll know it's a good investment to go send the card game back to the printers and print off some more copies. So if you fill out this waiting list, it's not binding. You're not 
stuck in any sort of situation where you have to buy the card game in the future. It's just letting me know about how many people are interested. So the more people that sign up and the faster, the quicker I can order another batch from the printers. So go do that right now. DanteStack.com slash store. One other thing. Also, while you're on the website, please, 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 if you haven't already, fill out our survey. If you go to the website, there'll be a link right at the top of the page. says fill out the survey. Take you 30 seconds at most. Um, if I get about 50 more, that'll really help. That's really the goal I'm looking for right now is 50 more. Okay, guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for enjoying Solve the World. See you next week.